M. Triplin. You remember remember him? Yeah. All right, so maybe I could play it during, uh, make that pop up on the podcast. I feel like his music's not at a point where we'll get a strike or anything yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, we'll we'll just have, we'll throw it up in post, right? Throw it up to the side in a tweet or something. But but basically, this guy M. Triplin, he performed at Rolling Loud, He and there were only 13 people. And it probably was, you know, a, a little bit more, a little bit less, but he made, he put out a tweet. It said, performing at Rolling Loud for 13 people. Got to start somewhere. Put the prayer hands up. Now, the beauty of this is he tweeted this. He could have just, like, felt all sad about himself. Dang, do I want to do this in life? All that good stuff. You know how people get down in the dumps. Instead, he tweeted it, and he just said he was thankful. You know what I mean? Put prayer hands up. Got to start somewhere. That humility went viral where most people have been like, dang, that's an L. He got made fun of by some people, but he also had a hell of people be like, yo, that's dope. Keep going. Keep trying. Da, 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 da. All that good stuff. I can go do some comments. Well, of course, you know, people start spamming it by now. Let's see. Where is he at? 11,000 retweets. 1,700 plus quote tweets, right? He went viral flipping a moment that was an L into a positive just by putting it out there, making people aware. And then on TikTok, he basically talked about his viral tweet, right? So he said, all right, one, I only performed for 13 people on Twitter, right? And because of that, 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 he put that out there, that went viral. Then he did a TikTok. Yo, that moment became a viral moment and now people know me, right? So then he highlighted the fact that he was going viral in a different tweet. I mean, in a, in a TikTok, that shit did a million plus views. Now, a lot of people know who he are. Now we're talking about him right now. And it's all because he took an L and flipped it, period. So if you put a billboard out in the city, it's only going to be seen by so many people. But if you take a picture of that billboard, you put it on the internet, now more people are going to see it, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you do the marketing campaign that you're talking about. Oh, I, I put up an ad, yo, in 20 minutes, you know, come on out here. Um, I'm going to be on the corner of Euclid and X Street. I'm going to be handing out CDs, maybe doing a little performance. Who knows how many people come out? Five people come out. But I get that footage. Yeah. And I make it look lit like we had a good time together while we're out there. Yeah. And then I capture and tell the story about how I ran an ad and people came out and yeah. make that shit look good. And now people are talking about, yo, he did a unique, crazy campaign. Who cares about how successful the campaign was itself a lot of times? It's just the story that you did something different. Yeah. So, like... But the whole game, especially as an artist, you got to be resourceful and just keep flipping and flipping. That's what the marketing and branding stuff is about. Those stories are like badges where people like now know you. You are stamping their mind. And they go, like, I remember when he did this and it popped him off. That's that's kind of how you got to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and two, I think like it's a it's like a marriage of those two worlds. Right. Because I always think there's a battle between like digital marketing and then. I don't know the word for it. We're just going to call it real world. Real world. Yeah, like physical, real world. Physical world is yeah. what Mark Zuckerberg, like he doesn't like real world okay, because yeah. of the whole metaverse. Like, yeah. no, that's the real world too. <laughs> the so, physical world. So digital marketing versus like physical, like yeah. physical world marketing. And it's like, I think that there are too many artists who fight for the, the physical. They're, they're in denial. It's like, it's, a, <laughs> it's the internet age. But I always tell people, artists, bro, yeah, I think about user behavior and what we prefer and like as people we prefer the internet so we're not going back over here just because yeah. you as the artist feels like it just is what it is. Way. It's, it is what it is right and there's those who fight for the digital and the argument against digital is that like you can just become seen as like just an internet figure right like people only kind of know you as the guy that the tiktok rapper the youtube rapper right because like, they don't see you outside i feel like the marriage of the best world is, is marrying both of those two things like when you can have a really effective ad funnel and you can go put together a, a, a pop-up you know what i'm saying street performance on on the, on the street in your hometown right because yeah. like you said like the perception of it is gonna be crazy because people are gonna be like oh this he's doing some shit that ain't never been done when it's like not really you just combining things that people don't see get done in combination a lot you know it's the story yeah, yeah. it's the story and then it's like if you really as an artist feel like that you're gonna be here for a while or at least what i tell artists not even if you think you're gonna be here if you don't plan on like quitting anytime soon, like quitting anytime, I'll say in the next one to three years that you have any idea, the idea is gonna work out because, like, like you said, it becomes a part of the narrative. Right. And as the narrative gets strong, as you do things, the narrative gets stronger because there's more time to add in things into the narrative. Right. Your narrative before 
might be like, you no, know, day one of it is like, damn, I did this thing and I had five people show up on the street for me. And like, that's the narrative you run with in the in the moment. It's gonna be inspirational to somebody. Somebody's gonna be like, damn, that's crazy, bro. You, you did all this to five people and blah, blah, blah. Right, year and a half from now, you do that shit again and you get, I don't know, 500 people. Now the narrative is like, man, it's crazy. Just last year, all I had was five people here. You know what I'm saying? Now I got 500, thank you guys, blah, blah, blah. And then you look different, right? Three years go by and you, you do your first headlining show you know what I'm saying? In, in your town, right. none of that was like, man, it's crazy, man. Just three years ago, I performed on the corner for these five people. She even just a year ago, I came out here and it was only 500 people came to see me. But today I'm looking at 3,000 smiling faces. It's like the narrative is crazy at that point, but it's a narrative you've been building for the last couple of years. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think ours, like think about it. It's like we we fall in love with the story. Like, That's all it is. Yeah, it's just a story, bro. That's like, all it is. And it takes a long time to put together a good story. But think, <laughs> think about this, bro. <laughs> Would La Russell be doing what he's doing now if he performed those performances in his backyard, mm -hmm. right? The whole bunch of dope clips. We know he got some he got some lyrics, right? So it's just performances, him doing his lyrics, right? And then he has some radio uh performances as well. So he has those backyard performances, he had the radio performances, dope freestyles. But what would happen if you didn't know that that was his backyard? Like how I feel about personally, or just like what do I think? Would you even know about him, or would he be as popping as he is? I don't think the the story would be as stronger, as strong, not as stronger, because like I think his his brand seems to be leaning towards like the humble DIY guy. You know what I'm saying? Like like my humble guy, I'm doing this shit no differently than like you, you or you could be. He doing. gives off humble to you? Yeah. He don't give off humble to me. He gives off. He like, gives off. I'm flexing. I'm killing this shit DIY now, guy. Now. I think now, like maybe okay. in like his like life. Russ, like yeah, like you know exactly, what I mean? Yeah. 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 I think like maybe in the last like two three weeks, but even in that, like it feels I I get why artists of that caliber feel like they have to move that way because it's still not a, as respected of a thing. You know right. Well, I, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what? There's a that's a different type of humble. Uh, <laughs> so because there, there's two things, right? One, I always feel like the people who put in the work, hey man, you. You, you humble just to put in the work because the people who don't put in the work are the ones who have head too big to think they don't yeah, got to do it, yeah, right? Yeah. Then two, I don't know if it's humble or overcoming or not or or being so about it. To me, La Russell seems about his business yeah. that you don't care about all this fake perception and stuff that a lot of artists won't do stuff because they feel like that's my hum humble thing or I won't be seen as a certain perception. Yeah. So like the the hustlers are humbled because they know they got to do what they got to do to get what they got to get right yeah. that's why yeah. that's one thing why street artists y'all complain about these street artists and street music but boy these street artists hey man they oh i gotta pay to do something oh let me go get the bag let me yeah. figure that out like i gotta do x y and z they 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 they, they hustle but like back to la russell all right if you don't know it's his backyard if you don't know that he's doing this campaign where you can pay whatever you want. All of those things, despite what the numbers are doing, like you said, our story, then the fact he's doing them successful, successfully, that becomes even bigger story, yeah, right? Yeah. And you share and you share. I think his his project sold like, I don't know, it was like 1,200 units or something, I don't know. I, I just saw the number in passing, but like the fans don't even know if that's a big or little number. Yeah, They have to tell the story. Like that, oh, this is amazing number for independent artists. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is the top number for independent artists because that could sound little when you just think, oh, well, what did Kendrick Lamar sell? Or you don't, you you buy it, you don't even know how much he sells. So it's your job to keep telling the story and make them aware of it. The story is, especially for uh, indie, like it is the superpower. Yeah. Right? It is the superpower. So. So yeah, one Russell's killing that, and this guy, shout out to M Triplin, um, again for sharing your story and making a moment out of it, taking that L and flipping it, like whatever y'all paid to get on that stage, I'm sure it's worth it now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, hey man, shout out, shout out to y'all. The, the last thing I'll say too about the M Triplin things, I meant to say earlier, but what I respected about that is that like, if you've been at any of these festival stages early enough to see the open ass, you know that's how it usually is anyway. So I be. So yeah, bro. It's like they really just be trying to convince. Like going back to the fans on no shit, bro. I need to convince the fans of shit with this. So I respect him for doing that because like anybody that's ever been, oh. they already knew, bro. They hey, knew hey. Because what happens with everybody else? Everybody else share the pick that's on or the view 
that is just showing them and they make it seem like it was lit as fuck and everybody was there for him. Yeah, that's the game. That's the game. That's the game. And he flipped it by going against it and said, hey, man, it wasn't nobody here. Yeah, well, it, was, it was me. <laughs> me and these 13 people, but, hey, I was here and I had fun, bro. Hey, so, that's what I respect about that shit. That, uh, hey, man. <laughs> that, hey, that, that's, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. It's like just not flexing becomes the flex when yeah. everybody flexing. Because it is, I think, I think, Music fans are starting to get trained to be entertained by the more like real side of what it is to be a music artist. Because there's more indie artists than there are, you know, like majorly popping artists, whatever sound we want to call those. So like that's the real story of 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 so many more people. You know, like it's right. the, it's the it's, it's the reality of it. And I think people are starting to kind of get that and like sense that, especially as like a lot of artists are be more like open about shit like that. And then if you are in the game yourself. Like you know, you already know. You so you maybe just won't highlight that moment of yourself, but every artist has, has has been through that at some point. You know what I'm saying? Like every artist I'm performing in front of thirteen people, and it's like, bro, you at Rolling Loud just because you at Rolling Loud, which I think is the biggest learning moment for a lot of artists, especially ones that pay for it. Cause like you said, like you said a very important thing at the end. However much you pay for this shit, I'm sure you got your money's worth <laughs> <laughs> out of it because of this content thing. But there are so many who go here and think like, oh, it's Rolling Loud, like it's yeah. gonna be. I don't know how many people go. Fifty thousand people here. Somebody gonna come watch me. And it's like, no, bro. They really might not. <laughs> like, because nobody knows who you are. Why? Yeah. Think I, about I, that. <laughs> what are you gonna do with this content beyond this moment? Because this, this moment might not be as lucrative as you think it's gonna be. But what are you gonna do with this shit on the internet? Yep. To make it worth it. So I think that's the most important thing. Because you're right, bro. If that hadn't happened, I mean, maybe he would have got the value from just having the the experience, right? Yeah. Walking the stage. Doing, felt I mean, good. I mean, yeah, like inspiration. Well, yeah, Roland does a good job. They stay so man. It'd be, be a cool thing to go through. But yeah, yeah, he got easy. I would guess at least twenty x return. Bro, I'd be hurt, man, if I was somebody who performed the same day or last year, and I only had five people show up. I'm like, dang, bro, I should have did that. Yeah. <laughs> I was up here so in my feelings. I didn't see the vision, <laughs> man. I should have flexed about how few people showed up. Yeah, bro. If it was now me, you can't do it because he already did it. He's like, oh no, nah, you you just copying. If it was me, bro, like I would have went home and made a YouTube video about the whole thing. Like, yo, I paid. Well, well I mean, I guess we can't. We shouldn't say that because we don't know. You know what I'm but we know. You know, I feel like we know, but we don't know. You know yeah, we don't. Yeah, you don't know. know. But I would have made a video about yo. I performed for Rolling Loud for the first time here. But I would have really, I would have milked that shit so much. Now that that can still happen. Yeah, you can yeah, still yeah. do. The I perform first time, even if you're not him. Yeah. But if he has footage, that'd be dope to if you like. You know, peel back and then show that, and kind of keep the the thing going. That'd yeah. be dope. Yeah, bro. If you see this, like that, that one's on the house. Do that. <laughs> do that. I do. <laughs>